Right then, we're back again for uh, Coaching the Coaches. This is volume two. So if you haven't seen the first one, please go back and uh, and watch that one. So this uh, one is going to function a little bit differently. But first, I'm just going to talk you through sort of who I am and um, why you should be listening to me. Um, so my name's Sam Lawman, and I've been competing in life saving for 14 years or coming up 14 years. Um, I've been a member of the GBI national team since 2019. I've won four Commonwealth, one European and one world title. I've been coaching since 2015. And uh, I'm part of two clubs, Pool Life Saving and part of Race Base Yorkshire and Surf Life Saving and part of, uh, of Gilly. So, first things first, before we get into anything, if you've seen the first one, you'll have seen I've said something similar to this before. So, when we're dealing with life saving, it's not like swimming, all right? There is things we can control in a race. In swimming, if you're swimming slow, you're swimming slow. But in lifesaving, you can still do the skills very well. So control the controllables, all right? There's no excuse for poor skills or in the case of this uh, seminar, transitions, all right? And we can dream it into existence. If you keep thinking about it, visualizing really helps, especially when, when dealing with lifesaving. So the agenda for today. So we're going to be dealing with four sections, all right? First up is relays. Um, the first one we're going to look at is, is mannequin relays. So starts, mid pool, wall changes, and um, dealing with if we're carrying the mannequin across the chest and getting it underneath us or to our sides. Next up is three to four changeovers in medley relay. And then we're going to deal with, with the mixed life cell relay. Changes two to three, which is probably the most technical one. Next up is obstacles. Just a, a quick one on this in case people are not sure what to do. So we've got pushing off the floor, fly kicking, and then some breaststroke variations um, for those of you who uh, like doing breaststroke. Then we're gonna do uh, diving with fins and tubes, and then some uh, some fin race tips. And the last thing um, a couple of people talked about is, is planning live saving sessions. So how do these differ to swimming, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So first things first, um, a, cl a quick disclaimer. Obviously, everyone uh, is anatomically different and, and may not be able to do some of these techniques I'm talking about. So you might do variations of these, and that's that's completely fine, all right? These are what I have found over my time doing life saving to be the most efficient, all right? Uh, so you might do something uh, that, that's not included on here, and that's completely okay too. It doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It just means you're doing it differently. Um, and I'd just like to take this time to thank Leeds Phoenix for letting me use uh, some of their pool time. Um, and uh, yeah, let me use their equipment too. So first things first, mannequin relay, what does it involve? All right, so there's four legs. One of them's starting with a mannequin when it's not moving, and three of them are changeovers. We must focus, all right, on, on tactics here, where athletes are best placed, all right? People are left-handed, people are right-handed. We need to think about that when we are dealing with the mannequin relay, because we can get Faster times by putting people in certain places. So we've got a start, we've got two mid pool changes, and we've got a wall change. All right. The first thing we're going to start off uh, if uh, start off with is the start. And we must remember that we have a changeover period of five meters. All right. There's five meters where both athletes um, can be in the zone at the same time and both have hands on the mannequin. All right. And leg two and four can be can be longer. They're probably the most the, the longest legs. So your fastest people probably should be there, all right? So first things first, the mannequin relay start, all right? So um, depending on the, on the size of your athlete, okay, and the, the carry technique, you might do something slightly different to this, all right? But what we want in all cases is the mannequin to be as flat as possible, all right? We want to follow the path of least resistance. So we want to probably tuck the bottom of the mannequin underneath us, okay, underneath both of our legs so we can get good propulsion from the wall. And uh, in this technique that I'm going to be showing you, we want to tuck the mannequin's face uh, towards our armpit so its head is, is near our head, all right? Um, so uh, we want the pulling arm on the wall or on the block. Obviously, there's no block at the pool I'm using here. All right, so our hand would be on the block. Ready? 
All right then, so we're going to watch this one more time. So as you can see, I've tucked the mannequin all the way underneath me. Its face is near my face and tucked towards my armpit. All right. We'll watch that one more time. So I've dived over the top of the mannequin. I've dragged it with me. And after my dive, I'm going to slip it down just beneath me into, um, into the underneath technique that, that's from the first seminar. All right. So a couple of key things. As I've said, my feet are high on the wall. So the red circle here shows how far my uh, how far up the wall my, my feet are. That allows the mannequin to get really flat almost at the surface of the water. So it's really flat, okay? The mannequin's head uh, is locked into my armpit and, and towards my face. And the bottom of the mannequin's uh, is close to my body, so it's really flat, all right? And those red circles there are, are showing that. So we're going to watch it. It's going to be a little bit bigger. All right. So tucking the mannequin underneath me and setting off. And we're heading off down the pool. Right then. I'm going to move on quickly here because this could, this could, I could go on forever about this. So next one is our mid pool change. All right. This is going to be very complicated. You might have to come back and watch this. All right. Again, we need to think tactically about what hands our athletes are using, all right? The left to right hand changeover is the fastest, but obviously not everyone is, is left-handed. Uh, well, you don't have a proportional amount of right-handed people and left-handed people for the most part. It's, it's normally about 80-20. So 80% of people are right-handed and 20% are left-handed for various reasons, but we're not going to go into that. So... The one I'm showing you first is where they both have the same hand. So they're both, both right-handed or left-handed, okay? So uh, this is going to be very different, um, very quite a lot to what we're going to do if, if they have different hands. So this is when we need to think tactically about where we place people. So the first phase, okay? Carrier one, so the guy swimming towards, uh, towards me here. I'm in the yellow hat, all right? Um, he's going to carry towards me, and I am sat on the, the 22 and a half line. So that is going to be where the, the, red, the, um, the red lane ropes finish, all right, in this case. Okay. So I start moving, so I'm the yellow hat, all right, when C1 approaches me. So just start edging forward, edging forward a little bit. And the second person, okay, I'm, is going to take the mannequin off C1, okay, as C1 pulls the mannequin towards um towards me here to give it a little bit of propulsion so i can get my hand on the uh the mannequin depending on how deep the pool is you might push off the floor as well okay so you each person cannot let go of the mannequin unless they are in the designated change zone all right so this is both the same hand So as you can see, he pushed the mannequin towards me because we're in the change zone and I set off down the pool. So we'll watch that one more time. I grab all the mannequin and I set off down the pool. Okay. Right then. The next one, okay, is when the each person has a different hand. Okay. This one is much faster. So the same thing applies. We sit on the 22 and a half line. Um, and C2 begins moving as, as C1 approaches. So C stands for competitor, okay? So this is slightly different because what C2 is going to do, okay, is going he's gonna to touch the mannequin and he's going to slip his hand down the back of the mannequin's head whilst C1 is still touching the mannequin, okay? And we're going to do two strokes together because two strokes is much faster than one person doing one stroke. But the, the, the first competitor, okay, must let go before the 27 and a half meter line. So it can only really be one or two strokes. All right. So we're going to watch this. I'm going to turn the volume off. As you can see, that's much faster than one person going by themselves. All right. And I've got a different angle here. Um, let me just get rid of all these. And we'll go again.
and there we go okay obviously this isn't perfect um me and uh, this gentleman haven't worked together before and and he's not done some of these changeovers okay but very good change there to say it was only one of the first times he's done it all right right then so some of you are probably asking what if our competitors use across the chest carry technique there's obviously lots of smaller people and especially girls use across the chest how do we change over doing this because the mannequins underneath us okay there's a few ways to address this but the most effective way i found okay is to slip the mannequin down your body so it goes um goes underneath you or towards your side it'll make much more it'll be more clear when uh, when i play this video right so as you can see we're approaching our competitor and we slip the mannequin down our side much easier to change and then the next competitor if they're doing across the chest can pull it up and grab grab its chest again under its armpit all right right don't want to keep you here forever and um, we've got a wall change here wall changes can vary massively okay um we're not going to dwell on this one too much because you really have to play with your athletes to find out what works best for you because obviously we've got left-handed and right-handed uh, an effective way I found um, is competitor of an outstretched arm. As soon as I touch the wall, he grabs, spins the mannequin round, all right? And then me, as the, uh, as the person changing, is going to support his mannequin and lift the bottom of it, all right? So I've touched, grabs the back of the neck, and sets off down the pool, getting it in his position, okay? I support the mannequin underneath just to make sure it's lifted up a little bit. It's not a push. It's kind of a lift. So we'll play that one more time. Grab underneath. I've supported him there. And he's off down the pool. Okay. If you uh, want some more videos on this, I can probably do it for, for volume three whenever it comes out. All right. Right, moving on. We're moving on to the medley relay next. And the most difficult change tends to be the third to fourth changeover. This is swimming with um the tube without fins and then you're changing person with fins all right so setting up a few faqs so which shoulder should the first person put the sash on okay you need to communicate with your last person to find out what they prefer to tow with because it doesn't really affect you too much okay next question should i put the sash across my body no you do not do what you do on toe when you put the sash across your body you want it just on one shoulder if you have it on boat across your chest okay, it'll be really hard to pull off in the race because you're going to need to pull it off so first things first the the fourth competitor here okay who's who sat on the wall has his hand out of the water if he doesn't have his hand out of the water you might get dq'd because the referees might say that you've grabbed the sash before uh, the competitors touched all right so first things first c3 swims with the tube on on one shoulder and c4 waits holding both of his arms one of his arm out of the water and one arm on the wall or on the block uh, if the pool has a block second part so when the third person touches so the person with the tube um he's going to lift his arm out of the water and then c4 is going to grab the sash and and put his uh put his body through it and the third section c4 is going to go underwater to avoid the tube and the the person who hasn't got the fins on is going to grab onto the back of the tube and then kick as fast as he can all right it'll all makes sense when we watch this video touch arm out and the person grabs it and puts it across their chest okay so as you can see here he grabs it with his left and then puts his body okay through he pushes his his right arm through the sash whilst he's got hold of it in his left right then we'll break this down so first step swimming down with it on his shoulder and the fourth competitor sat there one arm on the wall and one arm uh, raised out the water ready to grab okay so hand out, hand out. Second phase, okay. Third competitor's touched the wall. The fourth competitor is grabbing the sash and he's about to dive backwards. So my arm's out the water here. 
and I've touched the wall, um, and my uh, my teammate here is going to grab. So in the green, he's grabbing the sash, and his arm's going to release the wall, and he's going to dive through it. And the last stage, C4 is going to go slightly underwater to avoid the tube getting caught, so he's not going to get hit the tube. All right. So as you can see here, you can't see him because he's gone underneath the water. So watch it in big big screen. And head off down the pool. Right then. Next one. Mix life saver relay. This is the newest relay that's been added um, to the to the life saving um, rule book. All right, so we're 50 free, 50 underwater with fins, 50 carry with no fins, and then 50 carry with fins. So the third and the fourth leg is the same as a mannequin relay wall changeover. Just someone has fins on. All right. We are going to be focusing on the second to third change. So the 50 underwater with fins and 50 carry no fins. All right. So a few frequently asked questions. Does the person okay, on the second leg have to touch the wall before they touch the mannequin? The answer is no. The second person can grab the mannequin as soon um, as, as they can. Okay, They don't have to touch the wall first. When can the third person grab the mannequin? They cannot grab the mannequin whilst it's still underwater. They have to grab it when, they reach, when the mannequin's head reaches the surface or any part of the mannequin reaches the surface. And a few people have asked me this before. What, um, who should go on which legs? Obviously, it's a mixed relay, so we have two uh, females and two males. Usually, okay, unless someone's incredibly good at one of the legs, um, we go woman on 53, a woman on 50, 50 um, with fins, and then the two men's on the carry legs, okay? But not always. You need to, you need to check with your team who's fastest at what. So, uh, I'm going to play the video first, and then we'll go through the, uh, the instructions. Okay, right. First part. So the second person okay, should ideally not surface on, on this leg. So you want them going all the way in the water. We don't want people coming up and going back down. It's, it's slow. It's only 50 under. Second part. Okay, the person swimming underwater should only break streamline when they've reached the mannequin or nearly reached the mannequin. Okay, it'll be slowing them down if they are swimming underwater with that arms apart. Number three. The competitor swimming underwater is going to grab the shoulders and the neck of the mannequin and push uh, the mannequin upwards. Okay, and ideally a little bit outwards so the competitor can grab the mannequin. It's not vertical. Okay, um, step four, you should be trying to get a little bit of angle on the mannequin. Um, so C3 can sit off immediately. And then stage five, C3 grabs the mannequin in a headlock or the back of the neck and pushes off. Okay. Right then, so C3 shouldn't touch the mannequin before it surfaces. On here, my uh, my third leg person might have just touched the mannequin beforehand, okay? This person had only just learnt this relay, um, so please make sure you let the mannequin surface beforehand. Right then, breakdown. So underwater kick in without surfacing, down the 50. Second part, break stream line just before the mannequin, as you can see on the, the picture on the right-hand side. So um, the competitor underwater pushes the mannequin uh, to the surface at a slight angle. And stage four, the person on the wall grabs the mannequin and then sets off down the pool as fast as they can. So I'll watch that one more time. I'm going to turn the sound off. Right then, moving on. So, section two now, section two of four. We've got ob obstacles here. So the last few competitions I've been to domestically, 
I've seen some um, quite rogue um, ways to maneuver an obstacle. These are the four main ways. But a few things we need to consider when we're deciding what method we are going to use. So we need to think what pool we are racing at. So some pools are three meters deep. Therefore, you're probably not going to be pushing off the bottom. That will slow you down. We also need to consider what the floor is like. So if the floor is slippy and tiled, okay, we might not want to be pushing off the floor very often. But if it's very grippy, okay, we might want to do that. If it's a movable floor and stuff like that. Okay, so the four main uh, ways to maneuver an obstacle is fly kick. Then we've got pushing off the floor with a breaststroke pullout. We've got pushing off the floor with fly kicks. And then we've got uh, breaststroke pullouts and kick. So some of these are quite self-explanatory. But I've done a few videos for you and I'm going to talk to you a few tips um, now. So fly kick. We literally, before the, before the obstacle, we're literally just going to fly kick underneath it and then um, break stream on when we reach the surface. So we'll play that again. Yeah. So we're not going to dwell on these very often, uh, very much. So this one um, applies to the breaststroke pullout as well, but the breaststroke pullout is slightly different. Okay, so we're going to fly kick. Okay, a couple of fly kicks down to the bottom, to the floor. We're going to scull a little bit. We're going to pull our legs underneath us and then push off. Scull and then back into fly kick. So it adds a little bit of momentum. Right, the next one. The same thing applies here, but instead of sculling, you are going to do a breaststroke pull down with both arms, which is going to help you get your legs underneath, and we're going to push off that way. So we go down, we pull out, pull our legs underneath, and then set back off down the pull. And our last one, okay, I couldn't find a good video, I completely forgot to film one. So we're looking at the lady on the... The underneath the yellow lanes, okay? This follows exactly the same pattern as what you would do on a breaststroke part in swimming. So if, you, if you're struggling to understand and see here, if you literally type in breaststroke pull out swimming, this is exactly what you would do off a, off a dive or a turn, but you're doing it under an obstacle instead. So the lady underneath the, uh, the yellow lanes. So she approaches, pulls down with both arms, and instead of pushing off the floor, she breaststroke, uh, pulls, uh, pulls and uh, kicks to the surface. Watch that one more time. So pull down and then kick, rest up back up. Right then, section three. So we've got little bits and bats here. We've got diving with fins and tubes. And then we've got a few tips on some fin events that I didn't cover on uh, Coaching the Coaches Volume 1. So... Obviously, in the, when I went down to the session a couple of days ago, I didn't um, well, I didn't have use of blocks, so I couldn't get a good video uh, to uh, to showcase this. But we've got a good picture of me here. So lots of people put their fin to the side of the of the uh, block. Okay, we don't need to do that. Our fins are very flexible. As long as you are not doing anything stupid, your fin is not going to snap. You can dive almost exactly the same as you would without fins on, okay? The only difference I use is I put uh, the block setting back one block just to give me a little bit more room um, to, to coil up, okay? So as you can see here, I'm diving exactly as I would if I didn't have a block, all right? All right, we've got a short video here of me talking how to put a tube on before you start. A couple of things to say before I play this video. All right, is you probably want to start with it on your back anyway. If it pops out or you want it to pop out, that's completely fine as well. Just don't tuck the uh, the string in too much if you want it to pop out when you dive in. But this is a really effective way of getting the tube in without you having to throw it or leave it on the side so it can catch on things. Um, it's also good if you want it to go on your back, which we're going to cover soon. So I'm going to let this video play. It's uh, relatively long. I'm going to let it play out. 
Are we on? Yeah. Right. First thing we do, put the tube on, dash across our chest, whichever side you want, depending on what uh, side you hold it with. The next bit, we put this, and it's going to go down, down our back. Alright? And we want these two rings, one to sit the other this side, and one to sit this side. Alright? And then we're going to put this round the back. Here. So when we dive in and we're holding streamline, all right, this ring can't fly past us, all right, and get lost, all right. So down our back, and then we should be able to grab somewhere in the middle of the tube. Just to add, if you're a female, you can just tuck it down the side of your suit um, suit instead. If you've got a closed back suit, I'd recommend not wearing this for toe if you want to tuck it in uh, and wear an open back one instead. All right. Are we on? Yeah. Right then, a couple of fin tips. Okay. So we've got 100 carry pickup tips. We've got a little bit of 100 toe um, uh, things to do during the race rather than the setup. And then we've got diving with a tube underneath us because that was requested after the last coach and the coaches. Right then. So. 100 carry. I think most of us know now the quickest way to complete 100 carry is going all the way underwater on the first length. Coming up is slower, okay? Fundamentally, it is slower, okay? If you are going to come up, you need to be efficient with it. You don't want to be coming up and swimming freestyle. It's slower than, than doing fly kick, okay? So you need to come up, get your breath, and then get back into your fly kicks underneath the water, all right? So if you are coming up, you should be coming up at 30 to 35 meters and then heading back down as soon as you can. 100% you need to be before the 40 meter mark. If you, if you are going down any later than that, you're going to be slow. And I've got some non-examples of this coming up on the next slide. So uh, the best example I've seen of this, she might have gone down a little bit late for me, okay, um, is, is Heather from, um, from Rascals. She's the top yellow lane in this in this video we're about to about to show you okay so the top yellow lane that's one that we need to watch so she's up one two three and she's back down so she can get a good angle on the mannequin and get it picked up all right well, we're going to play that again so she's come up 35 one two three back down and picking the mannequin up. Ideally, you want to be coming up doing one stroke and going down. But in this case, Heather Heather didn't do that. Um, but great pick up. Well, great first length if you're coming up anyway. Right, a couple of non-examples here. This is what happens if you go down later than 45. And I'm not bashing anyone here. These are all anonymized, all right? If we fix this, we are going to save our athletes seconds, if not tens of seconds in some cases. So if we see here, representing can you see all these athletes are going down way, like two meters out? This isn't good. We can save loads and loads of time. And this is what happens uh, close up. Let me just turn the volume down. This is what happens close up if our athletes go down too late. All right, we're stuck on the wall and then we're setting off. Not good. And we've got another example here. What happens if we go down too late? All right, strange technique anyway. But look at that. He can save himself loads of time. If we go back, save himself loads of time if he didn't go down so late. And if you watch Coaching the Coaches Volume 1. Right. So if you go down early, get a good angle on the mannequin, you're at the bottom of the pool and you, you're being super efficient here. Okay, you can get off the wall very very easily comparing that to this okay obviously his technique is completely different but if he's getting down early enough he can grab onto the mannequin and get set off straight away okay right next one 100 toe okay so the new thing to do is well it's not not particularly new is going on our backs but lots of of men especially open men Drag the tube all the way underwater for 40 meters and then come up and clip the mannequin. Okay. Lots of women and, and boys under 18 cannot do that. Okay. 
So as we've said previously, fly kicking is much quicker than surface freestyle. It's it's fundamental. It's fact. Okay. Okay. So we should be fly kicking whenever possible, especially with big fins on. Um, especially if we can't drag the tube underneath the water. So I've got an example here. Uh, it's the best example I could find. It's not the best video. Okay. What I want you to do is watch the ladies in the middle two lanes here. Remember to watch the entire video. We've got a lady here on the outside with an orange hat on. All right. She's going to come up and swim surface freestyle. Well, I want you to see the gap created between the middle lanes and this lady swim freestyle here because they, they are doing fly kick near the surface with their tubes on. I'm going to turn the volume off. So watch the entire 25 second clip. So they've all entered the water. The ladies in the middle are doing fly kick on the surface. And this lady on the outside is very fast, uh, surface free, clearly. But she's going to get gapped here significantly by the time they get to the mannequin. Okay, Look at the lady in the middle who's gone the fly kick all the way. Ladies should be coming up, even if they're coming up and going back down, doing fly kick. So duck diving, doing six or eight kicks every time. So I'm going to play it back to here. So even if you duck diving, doing fly kick on the surface, it's much quicker than freestyling which we see a lot of in the UK. So coming up and going back down is much faster than just doing fly kick all the way. Look at the gap. It's huge because they've all done fly kick. Right then, this was highly requested after the last one. Lots of people are keeping this in the shadows. I don't know why. Don't want to share information with each other. Okay, this is how to dive with the tube uh, underneath you on a 100 toe. So lots of men are doing this around Europe and the world. Right then. So I'll have a watch of this first. So the reason people are doing this is instead of dragging the tube under, the tube is pushing you up so you can go faster. That's why people started doing this. So first things first, step one. So the picture on the, the image on the left. We're diving in and we're going to squeeze our traps to our ears so the tube doesn't fly out the back. All right, so it doesn't the line doesn't extend, kind of like what we spoke about earlier. So what you need to do is get a big down kick to hold your momentum. So the third step, you need to barrel roll, okay, to the side your tube is on. I put my tube on the left, so I barrel roll um, to my left. Okay, so it takes a bit of thinking about that. So my tube is on the left, so I barrel roll to my left hand side. Okay. The tube will follow you underneath, so it'll come underneath your body. Okay, but it might take a couple of kicks to it for it to completely go underneath. Okay, you need to ensure your head is back, uh, and you look out for the flags behind you. Okay, so you're looking up, um, so you don't end up crashing into the wall because it can be a little bit disorientating. I tend to use a nose clip on this uh, just because just because I like it. Okay, but not everyone does. Right then, we're going to watch that again. Wonderful. Right then. Next section. So this is the final section. This is writing sets for life saving. Um, in this, in, in our country, Mike, the country I live in, so the UK, the uh, Great Britain, okay, there's there's only a finite amount of time we can train in a pool life saving. Most teams have an hour a week. Um, if you're lucky, you have you have a couple of hours. Okay. So we must be efficient with our time here. We can't be faffing around. Okay. If people want to do rope throw and stuff like that, you can do that in your own time with a, with a bucket of water and stuff like that. We shouldn't be wasting loads of time doing rope throws, okay? Unless you're a Cirque Live Saving team, you, you, that's what you focus on, all right? But if you're, if you're doing speed life saving, we need to be very efficient with our time. We need to be doing activities we can't do outside by ourselves, which is usually towing a mannequin, carrying a mannequin, and using our, our, big, our big fins. So. Um, we must keep our warm, short and sweet. We need to warm up, but they should be short, sharp, and they should be somewhat relevant to life saving. Things you don't normally do in swim training. So we should be adding simulated pickups or obs into our warm ups. Okay. So as I've just mentioned, there are three fundamentals of life saving that are not touched in swim training. These are mannequin carry, mannequin toe, and, and swim with fins. So these 
should be, always be part or form our main set. So the main part of our training. Okay. You don't need to do loads of meters in these sessions. Okay. It's not a swim interesting. You don't need to hit 4K. Um, and you're probably not going to hit 4K when you're using equipment anyway. Okay. Just make sure you have fundamental skills in each session. So uh, this is a session, um, well, uh, a kind of session I do quite regularly on a regular basis. Okay. Each session should have the following things. So it needs to have a purpose. You shouldn't just be getting in and, and flopping up and down with a mannequin. It should have some type of purpose to it. Uh, we should have uh, a warm-up. It should be short and sharp, like I said before. So in this example here, we've got 400s. We've got a uh, swim. Then we've got a little bit of obs. Uh, we've got pickups. Then we've got little fins. Um, and these are all off plus 20 seconds. So they're taking me under 10 minutes uh, to do to do this 400. Okay. Then we've got a little bit of build to get our legs ready to go a little bit faster. And then we've got our warm up. So again, as I've said here, point three, fundamentals. Mannequin carry is a fundamental. It's part, it forms three of our individual races in super, in 50 carry and in rescue med. We must do it regularly. It must be incorporated uh, on a somewhat regular basis into our training. So as you can see here, the set, We've got um, 20 25s uh, off 60 seconds. So our first one is two stroke breathing. We are going for a smooth stroke. Nice and easy. This will form part of your recovery during this main set. Our second one, we should be going at super pace, which is probably two stroke breathing as well. All right. So a little bit faster than our first one. Our third one, I want you to be four stroke breathing. Okay. So this is a little bit faster again. And our last one, um, is 50 carry pace, so you should be not breathing at all or breathing every six strokes because that's what you're going to be doing in a race. It needs to have some specificity, which is point four. Okay, there's no point in flopping about not doing very much, it needs to be specific to what you are going to be doing because we are only doing it one or two hours a week. And then we've got a little subset par uh, practicing some pickups um, every five meters for five minutes, and then we've got uh, some rescue med kit counts. So you should know how many kicks you do on rescue med. So the mannequin doesn't just appear. You know, like for me, for instance, I do 18 fly kicks off the wall. So I know at 16 kicks, right, I'm only two kicks away from, from my mannequin. Then we've got a bit of cool down and then we can get out. I know quite a lot of teams uh, don't have mannequins for everyone like I do. I have a couple of mannequins to myself. All right. So a set like this, you might be doing less 25s. All right. And then it might be one on one off. Okay. So. Uh, you might be breaking it into 50s. One person does 25 stops, and then the next person does 25 whilst the other person swims, and that type of thing. Or form a relay, okay? Um, so the next part, um, so well, there's not really a next part. This is kind of the end the end of this Coaching the Coaches seminar. Um, after um, I've explained how to find me, I've put some sets up so you can screenshot those. Um, these are just ones I found on my on my computer whilst I was I was planning this Coaching the Coaches session. So if you want to find me, if you're interested uh, in in-person seminars uh, or one-to-ones, I'm available this summer. Um, my email is as follows on the screen. Uh, if you want to catch up with what I've been doing, um, you can grab my Instagram handle there. And I also run a news page uh, for Lifesaving in Great Britain, which is Lifesaving News GB. Uh, thank you for listening. If you've got any questions about anything I've spoken about, uh, please just drop me, drop me a message on probably Instagram or in the comments. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and thank you. Hopefully I'll get another one of these out relatively soon in time for comps in September and October.